Hello everyone. Well, can you believe it? It's the 1st of July. Another month has just passed by in the twinkle of an eye. So I've been using the Hoover H3 500 cordless vacuum cleaner for the month of June. Well, most of it, but I did even take this on holiday in the caravan and that's why I want this particular vacuum for my caravan. So we went to a place called Whitby on the east coast of Yorkshire a couple of weeks ago and I trialled out the Hoover H3 in the caravan and I have to say the Hoover H3 didn't disappoint. My previous caravan vacuum was the Dyson V7 Trigger which I've now sold on eBay. That was just a handheld so you had to get on your hands and knees to clean the caravan carpets and since we bought a bigger caravan with more surface area to clean I wanted a cordless cleaner that had a floor head and a wand so there's no stooping or bending. So what I like about this cleaner it is relatively quiet so you don't want to be disturbing other people on the caravan site you don't want to be vacuuming and having people hammering on the door saying what are you doing in there so it is relatively quiet and um, well this is a mixture of it's I've gone a bit too full here this is a mixture of caravan dirt and household dirt so um, all in all yeah I've been really pleased with it for what I want it for I prefer it in my caravan than in my home it's certainly ideally suited to the caravan especially the way it stores because in its storage position like this it fitted in the caravan wardrobe just tucked in in the corner just like that and we could whip it out if the dogs brought sand into the caravan or you know general mess on the carpet I just whipped this out and cleaned and of course I also used it as a handheld the built-in dusting brush is pretty good dusting the toast crumbs off the worktop in the caravan and just generally giving the hard surfaces hard surfaces a dust I haven't used the upholstery side of this but it's there if I want it so having those on board really makes it ideal I did use the crevice tool occasionally where is it it's behind me that doesn't store on board you do have to get that out and use that just clicks onto the end but that was useful but being in Whitby by the seaside we did bring some sand all the dogs brought sand into the caravan and the dogs being dogs do like to go on the sofas and the beds and I did notice my dog Daisy she left hairs and sand on my duvet cover so I got the mini turbo nozzle the pet hair remover and it did a very good job I wouldn't say it's as beefy as the Dyson well it's, it's it's on par with the Dyson V7 trigger but not as beefy as say a Dyson V10 11 or, or no V10 or 11 I'm not including the um, hair screw wrap thing I don't like that on the latest Dysons it doesn't perform as well as the previous version but yes yeah, so, so the V10 and V11 with the standard motorized tool that is much better this is very soft brushes but just for cleaning the duvet cover well, while it's on the bed and the sofas it was it was good enough for that and it did certainly pick everything up so yeah I do like it um, little niggle is the emptying I suppose it's a, a bit hard to empty with it on the cleaner you have to really remove the container then you can empty it out um, I'll do that I'll do that now actually so you can see the sand but yeah I've let it get too full because it's it's going to be a finger job to, to release but when I was in the caravan and it got used a few times I more or less emptied it every time but yeah you can see actually that it's picking up this is awkward you can see I'm having to put my fingers in you don't have to put your fingers in you can take out the central shroud filter fairly dirty at this stage but not too bad You can see how the stuff sticks to this. You need to brush that off, rinse it out. I could have rinsed this out in the caravan. We had some nice warm weather, so it wouldn't have taken long for this to actually dry out. Oh, it's, it's a bit clogged up inside as well. Oh dear, quite clogged. 
I could use my new air duster. I did a video of that uh, very recently. I could use my air duster or another vacuum to just get that properly clean. And I'll clean this out before our next caravanning trip. So yeah, the, the emptying is messy. Let's just line this up. It only, it only goes in a certain way. Hang on, that's it. You can see what way the filter goes up because it says up. But I'm going to rinse. I'm going to rinse all that out. Have it all nice and clean. The roller brush is a bit dirty. You can see there is dog hair and some uh, threads wrapped around it. But you can clean it. Just take a a knife or a pair of scissors and you go over the grooves and it should cut the hair. This box opener is not really ideal but it is cutting at the hair but obviously to give it a good clean you can take the brush roll out very simply like that. So yes you are going to get stuff wrapped around and you will need to, from time to time, pick it off. I mean, I'm, I'd say this is going to be my caravan vacuum. And for that, it's ideal. I've really enjoyed using it in the caravan. And I'll just have to remember after each caravan trip, just to give it a, a clean up, vacuum off the filter, make sure the brush roll is clean, make sure it's fully charged. Incidentally, I only took one battery with me. This particular Hoover has two batteries, but I've kept one at home. To use as a spare and I never needed to recharge in the caravan I was still using the first battery I didn't have to plug it in to charge it so you know I'll have to spend a bit more time here's a tip a flea comb this is <laughs> designed actually this is by Cobold for work but I think it's the same really the same as the flea comb or knit knit comb that's it a knit comb you can get those some chemist or supermarkets and they're pretty good if you want to do a deep clean of your brushes and this is something you won't have to do all the time make sure you get the worst off make sure there are no threads and fibers wrapped around but this if you want to spend a winter's evening with your knit comb and your vacuum brushes it's well worth doing I'm just showing you roughly what you can do and I'll be cleaning that up properly later but already it's it's better than it was and when you've got the brush out, of course, you can just check for any blockages. It's all free of any blockages. What I didn't point out in the initial video of this, you get supplied two of these strips. And it says for maximum carpet cleaning performance and I think hard floor, attach both strips. Well, I haven't. I've just attached one strip at the front and at the back and there is a velour strip but you can replace the velour strip with one of these flexible blades and it is supposed to increase pickup on carpet but I've just put one strip on the front and uh, left the velour strip out the back let's pop that back in it's not very clean but you know I haven't time to go into too much detail you've got the gist but yes, it's not too bad. The window hasn't got too cloudy yet. But then again, it hasn't been used a huge amount, just a month. And uh, yeah, for, for, what it, for what it is, for my caravan, it's ideal. And this is going to be my, well, holiday driver in the caravan. Not my daily driver, my holiday driver. Another thing I like about the Hoover H3 500 is the included storage bag. But it doesn't really fit everything in. Well, at a push, you can squeeze everything in. But I was able to get the main cleaner itself and all the other bits, including the wand, into this little bag here. And this was a bag that used to hold a single luxury like down mattress protector set. So it's not a very big bag, but everything fits in there. So that was ideal for putting inside the caravan when we were going en route to our travels in our caravan uh, park. It all fits in there. So once I've cleaned this up, charged up the battery, it's going to go back in here and it'll be ready to take into the caravan for our next trip away.
Well, it's time to say au revoir to the Hoover H3 and I'll see you again on my next holiday. Thanks very much. And it's time to go and fetch the vacuum of the month for July. And here is a clue in the socks. A sort of clue. Another clue. This machine is a retro model. It's a blast from the past and something I've wanted to try out for quite some time. So let's go and fetch it. Yes, folks, we're traveling back to 1979 when this fabulous Electrolux 504 came off the production line in Luton, Bedfordshire, England. This one I've shown you on my channel when I first got it. I was absolutely thrilled with this. This cleaner almost looks brand new, even in real life, not just on camera, even in real life. This lovely retro cleaner looks new and it sounds very good there is the ticking time bomb question yes it's got the ticking time bomb in it when i first got this i didn't do much to it i polished it a bit didn't delve any deeper than the surface but when i did i noticed the dreaded suppressor and in this particular model it's located next to the motor and not in the handle or at the top of the bag housing as in some later models no it's right next to the motor under the hood so I've had a look and it does look like it's dodgy. It looks like it might fail. So at the moment, the suppressor is still inside. So it's sort of Russian roulette with this machine. Every time I turn it on, I get that, oh, is it going to blow this time? And we don't want it blowing. We want it sucking, you see. This does suck. Nothing sucks like an Electrolux as the adverts went. So. I will be taking out the suppressor and I, I'll probably make a video of that and show it this month because I want to do that fairly soon. I've had to order a new soldering iron. I can't find my old one. I don't use it much. So I've got a new soldering iron coming this Friday and um, some heat shrink stuff. So I'll remove the suppressor. Once that's out, I'm going to feel a lot happier turning this cleaner on. And we'll, we're going to address the age old question of should you take the suppressors out? And obviously a TV suppressor or choke, as it was called as well, was basically put inside appliances like vacuum cleaners with electric motors to suppress any interference. In the olden days, with old analog TV and radio, when your mother came and vacuumed the living room, sometimes you'd lose the picture. Could even happen if somebody was using a vacuum in the house next door, or if your mother was vacuuming your bedroom upstairs while you were watching the multicolored, multicolored swap shop downstairs on BBC One. And this cleaner would have been just about the right sort of age for someone to have when the multicolored swap shop was on the uh, TV. I'm showing my age now, if you remember the multicolored swap shop. Were you swap shop or you tis was? I was swap shop, folks. I was swap shop and Blue Peter. Some of you may have been tis was and magpie. That's gone right over the heads of most of you, but some of you will know what I'm talking about, hopefully. So, yes, the suppressor's in there. It's starting to look a bit, you know. So, that's going to come out as soon as I can, and then I can relax a bit. Ah, oh, that's what I was going to say. At the moment, you can see, when with the suppressor in, I can see the commutator and the carbon brushes just, and I can see them sparking slightly. Now, someone told me, if you remove the suppressor, that uh, the carbon brushes will arc and spark a lot more. So it'll be interesting to see. I'm going to film the motor with the hood off uh, going with it sparking with the suppressor. I'm going to remove the suppressor and then afterwards film it and to see if there's any difference because this particular person says your motor will wear down much quicker without the suppressor. So hopefully that will see if that's the case, if it's going to spark loads or if it's just going to look exactly as it did without the suppressor. This possibly, the suppressor may have already blown on this because they can still work. Some of these cleaners can still work after the, the suppressor has blown. So, hmm. Anyway, let's have a closer look at the underside of this cleaner. 
I have given it a little bit more of a polish because this poor girl, oh, look at that. This poor girl has been in my storage unit and I went to my storage unit recently and I thought, oh, I'm gonna get that out. I don't really want to leave it in the storage. This is a childhood vacuum of mine. It was the vacuum my maternal grandparents had. And I remember my granddad coming back from the Northern Electricity Board showroom and presenting this to my grandma who said, Harry, that's too fancy. I don't want that at all. There's too many bells and whistles. I don't think she said that and she didn't sound like that. But I remember my gran grumpy grandma wasn't too happy about my granddad forking out on what would have been a fairly expensive vacuum compared to a Hoover Junior. Although not probably not that much more. But my grandma was used to a soft bag Hoover Junior and where my granddad presented this very lovely vacuum cleaner with its sleek looks, very 70s colour scheme and leaf pattern. She wasn't too happy, but my granddad did most of the vacuuming, which is quite unusual for that generation. But my granddad did it, so my grandma just sat there with a miserable face. But I certainly wouldn't have been miserable to have this presented to me. Absolutely, I know I'm gushing. And I know I'm a grown man gushing over a vacuum cleaner from 1979, but you're watching my channel. Perhaps you understand what I'm talking about, why I've got such a passion for the humble vacuum. Can't say why I have got such a passion, I don't know. I'm talking too much. I was told that recently. In um, Korean, somebody told me I talk too much, shut up. Thank thankfully, Google Translate came to my rescue. So I uh, replied back in Korean. So let's have a look on the underside because this cleaner is in absolute near mint condition. Since I bought this Electrolux 504 home for my storage unit, I've given her a little bit of love and attention. So the motor cover came off and that's when I discovered the suppressor looking a bit dodgy. I've oiled the bearings of the motor and I've also oiled and cleaned the agitator bearings. So I think she sounds a bit smoother than she did when I initially unboxed her. I've taken out the brushes to clean those and I've done what I always do. This has got two, the Beta Barn brushes. Some cleaners had four sets of brushes, too long and too short. Others had Beta Bar, the plastic Beta Bar, you can just about see there. Normally the Beta Bar would have been supplied here. When the machine came out of the factory, it would be one Beta Bar, one long Beta Bar and one short. But I mixed it up to give a sort of beats as it sweeps, as it cleans action. So we've got short brush, long Beta Bar, and then long brush, short Beta Bar. So this does sound smoother, I must say, especially the brush roll. I do have some spares for this machine. I'm not sure if I need to fit them though. It is possible to buy genuine spares for this and the other Electrolux 500 series cleaners, but they are becoming a bit harder to find, but I managed to find them. So I do have some genuine belts. I do have a genuine filter pack and that includes the caged filter that's encased in a plastic cage and the top filter. I also have a set of four brushes. Obviously if I need to change them in this cleaner I only have to use one long and one short one. I haven't been able to get genuine bags though. Although I have got some in my stocks but they're not dissimilar to this. This is quite a thin paper. But um, you can still buy bags. You can buy bags and belts pretty easily. The filters, if they're aftermarket, not genuine, again, pretty easy. The brushes, a little bit harder to get hold of, but keep looking, keep checking eBay, and they do pop up. I think this pack cost me $1.99, include, and I think all these did. It was the same seller. I think, yes, these three items cost me six pounds, plus two ninety nine pounds postage for all of them. So I was happy with that. Um, I don't know if I need to put a new brush brush bar in. I'm going to check, I'm going to open it and we'll compare. Yeah, this still, I don't, I don't think I need to, to be honest. There's still a lot of life in those. Although, mmm, I'm going to, because they are very stiff compared to the ones in the machine. Whether these soften up after a lot of use, but not that this cleaner's had a lot of use. Um, I don't know, right, I'll just get my 
screwdriver under these two screws and I might as well slip in. I'm assuming we've got the short belt, belt, short brush. Yes, we've got, we've got two sets. So one short and one long. Let's pop them in the cleaner. So it's just two screws to remove the base plate. <laughs> Haven't undone that one enough. There we go. And we can remove the whole, I'll just take the whole base plate off. It's easier. I've left a bit of residue. Now I've, I've treated this rubber bumper. Now it's very unusual for these rubber bumpers to survive. They start to perish. This one is in very good shape. But I found this uh, rubber treatment and I'll put a link if I, if I can still find it. And basically it's to help preserve rubber, stop them cracking. It's like putting hand cream on your hands or face cream on your face. So I've, I've put some on there and sort of wiped off the residue. But before this goes back into storage, I'm going to give it another good soaking and, and, and not wipe it so much. Just leave it on there. I'm going to try it with a lot of my vacuums that have got this sort of rubber bumper or um, furniture guards that tend to go a bit funny uh, well, as they age. But um, as I said, this one is still perfect and I want it to remain that way. Let's wipe off the, the residue is not coming off. This bit of furniture polish. That'll do. So, let's lift out the brush roll. And I'll, oh, I think, I think the, mm, I'm gonna swap the belt out, just so we've got a cleaner that'll be operating like it did in 1979. open up the packet so yes look genuine electronic belt hmm yes it has it has stretched a bit oh, it's hard to, uh, to try and show you can you see there that's the belt that I've just taken out yeah this yeah there is a bit in it look maybe a centimetre. So I'm going to put the new belt in. Hopefully it's the same sort of quality as this one. I'm assuming this is original. It just says uh, five on it. With these, now this has been cleaned, but these always gathered a load of muck inside. This one was pretty clean. But if you get an old Electrox 500 series with this sort of brush roll, when you remove the brush strips, you'll normally find that the inside of the brush roller is absolutely caked in fluff and dust. So, right, let's put the old ones. Let's have a look. There's not much in it, a couple of millimeters, I think, in the length, but these are stiffer, so I'm gonna treat myself. Don't get them mixed up. That's, is that the, that's the old one, it's got some dirt on it. Right, so we'll slide in the short brush. And then, ooh, don't mix them up, Rog. <laughs> That's stiffer. That's a stiffer one. They look the same, but they don't feel the same. That's, there we go. If I wanted to, I could put four brush strips in this and not have the beating action. If I had very short pile carpets, I wouldn't need the beating action, but I need it for this plush pile. I've oiled the bearings of these as well. Go in. Trouble it, these bearings move. Can you see how it's moved? Oh dear, hang on. I think that's, oh, there we go. As long as it uh, rotates freely. It's gone back, it's gone back how it was. They do move about the end caps. Right, now, stretching, well, getting the belt on the motor spindle shouldn't be a problem. It is still tricky though, because it's very tight. Tight as a gnat's doodah, as they say. Um, and again, doing it back to front isn't <laughs> easy. You'd normally be facing the cleaner doing this, but trying to film and do it. Right. You've just got to get the belt past the spindle. It's, there's hardly any space to do it. There we go. That's on now. 
I used to do this all the time, well not all the time, when it needed, with my mum's, my other childhood vacuum was my mum's 502, the avocado green one, which was the lower version to this. So even as uh, quite a young child, I used to change the belts on my mum's 502, and you really have to pull quite hard. There we go. That's fine. I'll just uh, switch it on. Yep. Poor. Oh, heck. <laughs> Getting a bit of. <laughs> it might blow in this video, folks. This pipe here. You can buy replacements of that still. Normally not genuine, but sometimes these would split. Um, it's not blocked. So I need to pop the base plate back. Yes, there is a distinct smell. Now I've got an air freshener inside the bag housing. So it's sort of masking a bit of smell, but being closer to the motor, yeah, I, I smelt something there. Right, there we go, there's that. Just to show you the quality of this cleaner, and it's something SIBO still do. A lot of manufacturers don't, but SIBO still use this method. You can see here that where the screw goes in, it doesn't just screw into plastic, it actually screws into a brass dubri. Can't remember the correct term, but it, it, it screws into a receptacle for the screw. And uh, where are the screws? They're still in the cleaner. I mean, good beefy screws as well. SIBO still make quality vacuums, but there's not, not many manufacturers nowadays that make vacuums as well built as they used to. But the suppressors, the, all the suppressors tend to not, not age well and they do have to be surgically removed. I think that's that's fine just check again one thing I haven't got at the moment but I do have a couple of sets is the cleaning tools for this they're either in my storage unit or at the back of the garage so I will be digging those out and using the tools with this Electrolux 504 twin twin because it can be used as an upright and a suction cleaner with a very easy tool conversion. So with a 500 series, you just lift up the little flap. Incidentally, there's no suction control on the 500 and 504 and some other 500 series vacuums. There'd be a dial here to reduce suction at the floor head. But uh, there is a suction control at the front of the 504, so they don't need it on the back. So yes, you just open up the hose port cover, plug the hose in, twist, and you're ready to do your above floor cleaning. So until I get my tool kit out, I won't be able to do my upholstery or nooks and crannies. I can do my stairs with this. You can use the machine in the upright mode on your stairs. So that's what I'll do until I get my tools. But it's a very ingenious way of connecting the tools and it's a clean air vacuum, clean fan. No, the dirt doesn't pass through the fan like it does on an older Hoover. So it's more like a cylinder sort of, but in an upright form very ingenious and far ahead of its time really compared to some of the competition because this is the deluxe version we do have a two position height control so on this plush pile carpet i use this machine in its high setting for everywhere else in my home i would put the lever down and then it's in its floating position it'll automatically adjust it might work in the lower position on my carpet i'm not sure but what I've normally had to do on this carpet is reduce the suction. This is the suction control at the front. You just slide it along max and minimum. So as I said, for deeper pile carpets, for lightweight rugs, you need to have it in the minimum setting. For the rest of my home, short pile carpet, I'll use the machine in max. This is the bag check indicator at the top of the bag housing. And it's not a light or a piston style indicator. This actually makes a sound when the bag needs to be checked. But I can't get this to go. I've tried blocking the machine from underneath the bag, 
locking it at the suction inlet and I can't get this to make the whistling sound I remember so maybe it needs taking apart and uh, having a look at there may be some dust in there that's stopping it from activating but uh, it never was very accurate these sort of things aren't you always had to rely on checking the bag from time to time because unlike a bagless cleaner you can't see the dirt it's all hidden away inside this lovely yellow cover I can see why my grandma may have been a bit wary of this machine because it was so much more convenient and modern than the Hoover Junior it replaced. For example, changing the bag on her Hoover Junior involved moving the little rubber band, pulling the bag off, emptying it, and then refolding it and putting the rubber band back down. But on the Electrolux 500 series, you just have this metal, yes, metal catch. They did turn into a plastic catch in later versions. And then you just open up to reveal the bag. And then the instructions always said, do it while the machine's running. So if any dirt was on the top of the bag here, it would be sucked into the machine. This isn't a genuine bag. They would have been, they'd had a yellow top for genuine ones. But you just pull out the bag. And in the case of the original, they were reusable. You'd have a red clip here. Slide the clip off, empty the dirt, refold the bottom of the bag, slide the clip back on and use the bag three times maximum but I suppose some people would use it a lot more than three times and here we have two filters just about C this is a later it's genuine but later because it's got a little pocket underneath for Electrolux's air freshener that was a, a grid round but grid shaped device but it's still, that is original as far as I know, because they all said top, front. And then, that's the fixed one. And also, it's just dropped down, if I can get it. I've popped in an air freshener. Oh, it's not going to come out, folks. I just have to tip it out. This is one of SIBO's new air fresheners. They've just brought out three new varieties, and they're made of... They say it's ceramic, but I think it's more like chalk. But these are supposed to just degrade once they're chucked away, so they're biodegradable. This one, I think, is the, it's a leafy, it's very retro, that smell, the green. It's just right for this vacuum. They do a citrus one and a rose one. This is sort of a English garden, I think. But yes, I wonder how long they're going to last. I don't put them in the bag. I put them on top of the filter in the bag housing but I need to put the filter back top front let's put it in like so and then I'll just pop that uh, air freshener back in these seem a bit tighter these uh, later bags or these might it might be genuine but just later because they are this color it's a switch on And this, this degrades the donut. I've put a replacement on top. That's the original, but as you can see, surprisingly it's in one piece, but it has gone a bit flat. So instead of just replacing it, I've just topped it with a, a newer, but quite thin. But combined, they make a nice seal into the bag. Because as you can see, when you close the machine over, whoops, that goes into there. And all the dirt, comes up through there, whether, whether you're using the hose or the main cleaner, it comes up through that channel, then through here and through there and then into the bag. Very, very clever. Here's the deluxe thumb operated on off switch, which incorporates a mains on indicator. So you'll see that it's glowing orange at the moment. That's just telling us the cleaner is plugged in. When you switch the cleaner on, the light goes off. At the back of the cleaner you'll find the carry handle that also doubles up as the lower cord hook. Now these can sometimes crack so I'm always very careful when lifting this. I don't really like to lift it by the carry handle and again I don't really like lifting it by the handle so I sort of have to be quite careful how I carry this up and down stairs because it's from 1979. The plastic may have got a bit brittle and I really don't want to damage this. So lower cord hook there 
and the upper cord hook is here and as you can see it turns down so it's a quick release so we can just gently and not tightly wind up the cable a lot of people broke the cables back in the day because they'd really tightly wind them round but you do it loosely and then when you come to doing your vacuuming again you just release the cable in one go to end the video let's try out this electrolux 504 again but this time with the new brushes and new belt see if it makes a difference Wow, with the new brushes and belt, this Electrolux 504 almost shook my house off its foundations, especially when I flipped to Max. <laughs> it really is a beast of a cleaner and Electrolux uprights were overlooked by some and insisted that Hoover uprights were the best. And yes, they are dirty fan uprights are exceptional carpet cleaners, but the 504 incorporated what I would say pretty decent carpet cleaning with the convenience of the above floor cleaning, the cleaning tools attaching to the back in a simple manner. And it's just so much more modern for 1979. Put this up against the 79 Hoover and with the exception possibly of the Starlight, it looked a little bit modern, Junior Deluxe. Compared to a soft bag Hoover Junior or Senior, this looked like it had come from the year 2000, despite the leaf print. That's the end of the video. I've really enjoyed this very indulgent but if you're still here at the end you'll know the fascination for vacuum cleaners you won't have found me too boring you won't have switched off if you're still here you're part of an elite club that absolutely eats and breathes vacuum cleaners and I don't try to bring politics or current events into my videos often but with what's going on in the world at the moment, it is nice to indulge in your hobbies, whether they're vacuum cleaners, stamp collecting, train spotting, whatever you do. Just indulge yourself, immerse yourself in what you enjoy, and you can temporarily forget what's going on in the rest of the world. And no way is Klaus Schwab going to take my vacuum cleaners off me. No way, Jose. He'll have, he'll have a big fight on his hands if he decides I will own nothing and be happy. Well, I'm happy to own lots and lots of vacuum cleaners. It keeps me happy, keeps me off the streets, and it keeps me sane. Thanks for watching. Thanks for staying to the bitter end. Please thumb up if you have stayed to the bitter end. Don't forget you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And um, I'll see you all very soon. There'll be more videos on this Electrolux cleaner, removing the suppressor. And I think I'll do a demo of this cleaner as well at some point. But I'm really looking forward to using this cleaner for the month of July. If you have any comments or questions about this simply fabulous vacuum cleaner, please comment below and I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Bye for now.